Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Joining us here is Crumbs from Dignitas. Another great win for you guys, chasing that top of the league that you gave up at MLG. Uh. I mean, let's let's talk about the game straight away. Let's not mess around. In fact, no, no. I want to talk about MLG because... <laughs> because <laughs> I could see the grimace okay. on your face the moment I mentioned okay. it. It was uh, a rough patch for you guys yeah, over there. Yeah, it was. Uh, you learn. I just want to remember what we learned and not what actually how we learned it. So <laughs> let's just keep it at that. What'd you learn? How not to. What Odie says. You need to learn how to lose before you learn how to win. Oh, so we old learned man how, Odie. We learned how to lose pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you, we saw the video at the start about MLG. You talked about the distractions that yeah. you get. Is that simply a case of you guys have got so used to now the studio environment here yeah, in I Los Angeles? Yeah, I prefer the studio environment. It's more like it's more professional. It's like you go in, you do your thing, and then you get out and you go back to practicing it. And then MLG, you have all these things that you can do at night. You can do while, even while playing in the game. So, you know, you can get a bit carried away, get off track. And sometimes some people, are. you have some days that you have less willpower so <laughs> which is interesting because i remember when the studio environment was set up a lot of the players were like i want a big crowd i want a yeah. thing they all know they got used to it and now you guys have kind of just got used yeah. to the environment so you really enjoying it playing it here i mean i do you, you, you looked pretty much in your element there yeah yeah i really like it here so let's go into the game pick some bands straight away um they didn't give you kale this time around <laughs> But they did give you Diana. It seems to be what Scarra falls back on, and Elise, more importantly, which is something that we either see Elise or Singe from, from Kiwi Kid. Both were available. Went with Elise, though. We were very surprised they let us have Elise. Elise is such a champion that everybody's picking it. It's really overpowered right now. It's got everything that you could want in a champion, pretty much. You can use it in any comp. It has multiple roles, everything. It's just so good, and we just couldn't pass the opportunity to not play it. We wanted to, from the bands, we decided we were focusing on top lane. Mm -hmm. We banned Renekton, Shen, and Aurelia, so three top lanes. And then with the first pick, Elise has taken another top lane out of the pool. And then they picked the top lane early, which maybe if they banned Elise, we would have taken Rumble, perhaps, and further denying top lane even more. So I feel like the game is at a point that there's so many overpowered or just strong champions in general that you can't afford to say, oh, I'm just going to drop one band here on this champion, one band over there and here. I think like you just have to focus them all on one ta on one person or on one strategy so that you actually have a more defined goal of how you're going to play the game. So that's why you focused on Mega Zero, yeah. I guess, at the yeah. start. You pretty much pinned him out and said, all your champions, no, you're not having them. Yeah. And, and Freak, you mentioned it in the picks and bans, like how you think he's a, a fairly shallow pool of players. Yeah, like why did you ban Mega Zero specifically, or why ban Top Lane specifically this time? It's a champion, is a player we know most about, and the one that we know has a champion pool, a defined champion pool that we are aware of. So doing that, you know, it's a, a lot easier to play. For instance, they recently picked up Nintanso and mm -hmm. is such a new player, you just don't know what he's going to be playing. And then they switch support roles, you just don't know what he's going to be playing. It's a whole, all a bunch of things like that. And having players that have a set champion pool makes it a lot easier to ban them out. Would, what? Or not just ban them out, just putting them into a champion that you know they're going to be playing, so you know what you're going to be up against, so therefore you can practice playing against that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Knowing what you know now, playing Marn with his new lineup, would you change anything next time? Uh, what do you mean? Right, like, so you'll play Marn another time in this season. Yeah. What would you change? Oh, I don't know about uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> uh, I want to go in towards Nasus. Uh, you guys have picked it up. Um, Europe have been, I feel, fairly slow picking this champion up. You're uh, uh, so, uh, fairly quick picking this yeah. champion up, but uh, the American scene slowly moving towards it. What are the benefits you see from Nasus, say, over, I don't know, the likes of Volibear or other junglers you'd go with now? Wither. That's pretty much it. Wither. Wither. 95% attack speed, so that's yeah. so detrimental. That's pretty much a stun that you don't even have to aim. You just wither. So, so is it. that why you didn't, the Patoy didn't take exhaust because you were withering on the Entonso all the whole time? Uh, I'd rather not speak into that. Since that's <laughs> kind of, you know, you want to keep some strategies to yourself and all that, but no, just wither in general. Such a strong skill against AD carries and pretty much everybody in general, even the, even the Karthus wouldn't like to be withered. So yeah. Think about it like that. Yeah, absolutely. Took him away from it. Uh, how do you think the game went itself? I mean, did it go to plan? You took out, you just exercised the standard strategy, take all the outer turrets, yeah. working towards the inner. You pretty much took the inner turret on your own in the middle. Uh, bottom lane, the rest of the team were there. Everything went to plan, as it were. I mean, 
we thought, ooh, Mana got a late game. They're taking their yeah. time on this one. Yeah, that's what I thought too. I thought it was taking too much time, but just going against Karth is such a pain because he can shove so fast. Mm. So I think that that's why we went a little bit more cautious because having them have Jarvan, who is sort of a long range ganker with the Karth global and the Rumble ulti that's such long range, you have to be a bit more careful how you tread around the enemy's base. Cool. So looking forward to the rest of your season here, we've just, you know, passed, sorry, passed the halfway point. You're in a second place. How are you going to retake first? Winning. <laughs> 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 that's pretty much it, winning. All right. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's yeah, the obvious, I mean, yeah. the obvious <laughs> answer, really. I can't see any other way. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> so do you think it's going to be down heavily to your matches versus Curse? Uh, no, this is going to be to every match. We have to win all of them. It doesn't even matter if we beat Curse or we lose against them. We have to win the majority. That is, that is the truth as well. You're going to have to keep on top of it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for Team Solar Mid to take on Complexity. Louder Morris of Complexity had a great week at MLG. Let's see which member of TSM he's targeting today and why. TSM is just one of the oldest League of Legends teams, like, ever. They came into the season a little weaker, but they picked up steam, and they look like uh, a pretty dominant team. Playing against TSM in scrims, we're okay, but, like, when it comes to LAN, we're not experienced, so it's going to be pretty tough. The person you really like to get behind in gold is Reginald, because he makes their calls, and you want to get him out of his game. They never really give us a tough time, and uh, that's pretty much what I think about Bucks to We're just going to see who brings their game. Let's see who brings their game, and that is the big question, of course. TSM was the only team at MLG to defeat Complexity last week, but as many of you may have heard, Chaos is taking a break from the team, and now Wild Turtle will be filling the AD carry role for TSM. Freak, how do you see this one affecting the team, especially, you know, that dual lane and how it's going to affect this match. Well, it's really, really interesting because TSM had just celebrated their like one year anniversary mm. of a stable lineup. <laughs> March 13th was the day that Dyrus joined as a top laner replacing the Rain Man and they had a slew of victories with that new lineup change and it worked really, really well. Uh, and then here they have like another sub coming in here, right? They've got, they've got Wild Turtle in there. Now, Wild Turtle is actually really, really good. And he actually has a history as a sub. He played for Legion in the mid lane at IPL faceoff, brought them to second place. Scar was tweeting him like, dude, that Gragas, how do I play Gragas? <laughs> like Scar, who's like known for Gragas, like Wild Turtle, teach me your ways. So, I mean, he can definitely show up and perform really, really well. Yeah, and of course, Dyrus versus Nick Wu in that top lane. Wasn't too close, really. No, last time these guys fought, like just a week ago, it was actually a pretty rough matchup. TSM did a really, really good job there. Dyrus especially had a really good match. And that was kind of how these teams match up. Like, there's always like one thing that happens that pulls, that pulls TSM ahead of complexity. The first time these guys matched, it was a very close game throughout. It took a while for the first kills. It was a very, very equal game. But it was like Reginald Zareth that would like bring someone to 10% health, force them out of the fight and say, okay, 5v4, we get Dragon. Or, oh, we killed you. We can start Baron. Or, okay, you've been forced out. We can push a turret. It, you know, again, last time it was Dyrus just squeaking ahead slightly. It's always one thing that pushes TSM ahead. And it tends to be the thing between the top laners that once you've got that advantage, you just absolutely yep. crucify them. Of course, Louder Mornis, he's kind of the key guy for, for complexity. It's the guy we've been focusing on. He's got his Ramas hat on today. Do you think we're going to see a Ramas? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We haven't seen him much overall. I know Sinai plays him a little bit. We've got a couple of guys mm. who, who bring out Ramas once in a while. But certainly his big thing is counter ganking, being at the right place at the right time. If you go back and watch his matches against uh, Dignitas, Dignitas, the yeah. very first game at MLG, he was basically there in time to stop crumbs. Two and double kills, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. Two double kills by seven minutes in, like reading the situations, showing up over and over and over again. Even if his other teammates would lose one on one fights, he would show up and he just, he literally just repeatedly double killed uh, and carried a game on Shogath of all champions. And, uh, you know, he's just, is such a high impact player for complexity. He's got to be on point and find the odd one. So, speaking of the old one, let's check out the lineups, of course. The blue side, it is going to be Team Solo mid. It is going to be Dyrus in the top lane. The odd one in the jungle, Reginald in the mid. Wild Turtle, you can see him there, all happy. He's the AD carry today, and X Special has his support. And, of course, on the red side, we do have complexity. Nick Wu in the top lane, Lauda Mortis in the jungle. Chooper, that mid laner, Brunch Hugh and MIA on AD carry and support. So, picks and bans, what are we thinking between these two teams? Bearing in mind, it's just only been one week past since they played each other. TSM so strong in that game, really. It was not a close matchup. 
Now, I mean, and what we've seen really is that uh, Nick Wu, we can't call him like the Instalock Z player mm -hmm. anymore. We've talked about that one a lot, and he's he's let that champion go two to three times in a row now. Uh, and so I can't really predict that as a ban. It seems like no one's really respecting that pick anymore. We've seen him actually pick up Rumble a heck of a lot. Uh, kind of over and over again, and we say that Rumble works pretty okay on low farm. He's got that equalizer no matter what. He's pretty impactful, but he's still just had a rough time in lanes. Like, you still don't want to be down 50 minion kills on your opponent. Even if you'll perform, you're letting your opponent farm. It's a, kind of a rough place to be. Uh, Cheaper's been running a lot of assassins. kozik has been in there a whole heck of a lot. Of course, we've known that Reginald can play assassins as well. So, uh, the only thing I can really predict successfully, I think, here, is that Brent Xiu has been playing long-range carries over and over again. He's been Varus and Caitlyn pretty much non-stop. Varus and Caitlyn, and when we do see the complexity on your screen, they did uh, see them earlier on in the show. I'm talking about MLG, and, you know, how much do you think that grows on these players? The fact that they've come into these big events, and now suddenly they're finding themselves these stances, not always just TSM, COG, which mm -hmm. has been for the North American scene for a heck of a long time. Suddenly these teams, your, your Complexes, your Vulcans, yep. they're turning up at these events, and everybody knows that they are now. So is that going to affect them sort of mentally, you know, as a player? It's like, whoa, actually, I am in the big time now. Yeah. I am at their level. I'm not this this guy that's trying to struggle to get in there. I am actually at their level and everybody knows who I am now. It can be interesting because traditionally, like in Season 1 and Season 2, you would show up to in-person events, right? Like, look back at uh, current GGU back when they were Team Dignita or Team Dynamic back when they were Monomaniac, right? They show up as a nobody and they get mm. fourth and they get a little bit of fans. They show up again and get fourth again and they, they kind of grow more fans over time and so they get their, uh, kind of a stable rise. Or people here, they're in a studio, they're not in front of a live audience and then suddenly they come to a major tournament and they've done all that rising in private, more or less, and suddenly yeah. they're up here as big fan favorites, and people care about them a whole lot, and like, whoa, and, and it actually is more of a shock than normal. Uh, and that actually can, you know, shake you up a little bit. Of course, they're back in the studio here. Again, you talked to Crumbs, and mm -hmm. he said he just kind of felt at home, felt nice to be back in the studio. I think that's kind of true for these guys, that they'll play a strong game. Well, I mean, it's only natural that they get used to their environments as well. Sure. You know, once they're used to playing in a, a set environment, the fact that they don't have that crazy cheering going on when they create that first blood. They actually can just focus on their team game as effectively yeah. as if they're at home. And it was interesting, too, because, yeah, going to MLG, right, and mm. it being different, right, and a little bit shaky, complexity of all teams performed among the best there, yeah. right? They had two really, really good victories there um, in a foreign environment. One of them against Dignitas, who have been all over the world, like, they've competed in foreign countries they've and been, been in really Korea, well. they've been Com in Europe, been in, uh, exactly, they, exactly. In fact, they were in the World Championships in the Intel Extreme Masters, so they've, they've right. been everywhere. Right, and, and then again, Complexity is a team that says, well, not a lot of us yeah. have a lot of land experience, <laughs> but screw it, yeah, we'll beat Dignitas, no big deal. Um, and so certainly they're a team that's prone for upsets, they have uh, great performances, and they seem to really not care about the surroundings too much either, so, uh, you know, even though on the site, again, uh, lolesports.com, you guys can vote on who you think is going to win, uh, the top four teams always end up being the favorites, uh, as far as the votes go, but complexity, uh, again, time and again, we see them have a really good shot here. Well, you say the top four, but I'm already seeing, I've seen it in the European scene and I'm seeing it in the American scene, you know, even the teams that at the very beginning of the season, everybody's like, wow, they're just going to get dunked. They're going to be right at the bottom sure. of the, the pile, but they're all picking up wins. Everybody is taking wins off everybody. The yeah. only team that's really kind of stayed away from being beaten by the lesser teams is Curse, I feel, yes. right now. And that's really the funny thing, too, is when you look at the season to start, you're like, oh, yeah, well, it's a CLG, yeah. and it's TSM, and it's Dignitas. Like, they've been the top three in North America for, like, almost literally ever. Uh, and they've all taken a backseat to Curse, who are like, yeah, I mean, we expect them to go through the qualifiers, but, I mean, they're the fourth team in North America. Like, they're pretty good. And it's like, no, no, they're the best team in North America. Uh, and, you know, even Dignitas, right? Two losses in a row at the start of the season. Whoop, came back up at first, now at second place. Uh, and then, yeah, pretty much every, every one of the bottom four teams has beaten someone in the top four. Again, only Curse has really failed to get upset so far. Like, these guys can beat each other repeatedly, and the only thing you see that's different is consistency. Yeah, and, and the one thing that we did hear about, that we're going to have to touch on, 
is the temptations of MOG. And they are, they, it is something that's affected TSM. Chaos is not here this week mm -hmm. because of those temptations. Yeah, he went out, uh, my understanding of the reports is he went out partying a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like he went out um, giving a couple of his friends some tours instead of practicing like on game day. And that's always kind of a rough thing, right? Again, you know, Crumbs talked about it, you talked about it. It is a big deal. I mean, I used to compete as well and, and having roommates come in late at 4 a.m. And, uh, and, you know, to the hotel room and be like, well, you know, I was out partying or drinking, whatever, and it just, it just disrupts you, right? Like, yeah. losing sleep just ruins your mental state. Like, a lot of things can go wrong at a live event. Sometimes it's your fault. Sometimes it's someone else's fault. But you've got to persevere through it. Um, and again, TSM, they are professionals, right? Their job is to play League of Legends. They have their own house. They are salaried. Like, this is what they do for a living. And to kind of throw that away and kind of slap it and say, actually, I'm just going to go mess around today. Haha. <laughs> like, it's, it's kind of like... You know, if even, if even it was their choice to say, no, KX, you're benched, you're not putting in the right effort, like, in my opinion, I think that's the right choice by them, that they should say, hey, you need to take this seriously or you don't get to play. Which is which is a big deal, and it's also a big pressure on that guy on your screen right now, Wild Turtle, mm -hmm. and uh, technically, Big Special. Special as well. I mean, yeah, of he's the support, he's played with KX for... As long as I can remember. I mean, it, you said, talked about a year lineup, but it was, he was way before that. It's probably a two-year lineup now. They've oh, been playing alongside KX easy. It's been a very, very long time. I remember watching streams like back when KX first joined, like, yeah, months and years ago, really. And uh, that is one of those big, stable bottom lanes. And it's not the explosive bottom lanes you see from someone like Doublelift, where it's like, it's the Doublelift lane, and he kills things with Vayne all the time. But they had always been very, very stable. You'd always see them put up good numbers. Like, I couldn't easily define their play style, aside from, like, it's safe and it always works. But they had always put up numbers. They'd always put up good stats. They performed excellently. And they had just such a great mental game on how to play, right? They always played every lane correctly, even if they weren't exploding kills or, again, being double if basically, who's just like the one guy who kind of takes over games by himself. They were always so successful. So Wild Turtle Special, it doesn't, it's not even, doesn't even sound the same. Like KX Special, they share an X. You can kind of say it together. Wild it rolls Turtle Special, it doesn't roll. It's more of a square than a circle. It doesn't roll as well. And he has to round those edges off. Wow, look at the big yawn on uh, X Special there. It's been a long night for him. And maybe he's been having thoughts about this match as well. I mean, you've got to think what sort of... What's going through his mind right now? I mean, obviously, we've seen, you know, the, the, the sad hamster, I think it's safe to say. Mm -hmm. um, he's not been happy of late. Things are not going well in his life. And now he's got his, his partner in crime... <laughs> stepping out for the week and, yeah. and it, it plays on these guys so it's it's you know the support guy is is, is a big part yeah, of a team it, it can and, and it really depends on how strong he is in in his mind because like certainly like i think everyone's been in a game where they're just distracted something's going on and, and you can't focus and you just you just miss things you miss the guy running through a ward you miss a timing on mm -hmm. something you forget to buy an item properly like you can lose your focus and just make stupid mistakes you would never make in a normal day and sometimes you can shut it all out and say it's game time, and you just you just play, and it just depends on the person. It depends on on how severe any of the issues are, and and I don't know, right? I don't know special all that well. I am not inside his brain. I'm not telepathic. Sadly, it did not evolve that, um, and and you know it just depends. Like he might he might just be able to block it out and persevere and play 100 percent, and we'll see. We're in a champion select. So picks and bans. What are we thinking? Bans straight away. Well, I, I like the trend, the the obvious trend of Kale, 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 Kale. Uh, <laughs> we've seen Autumn play a lot of Sinjao and Jarvan. Those are a big one. Uh, I'm going to guess, you know, Nikwu Rumble, Chupra Kha'Zix, Brunchyu on Kate, uh, or Varus. Most, mostly Varus. I think like the Varus-Rumble combo, they really, really like. They get crowd control to make sure the equalizer hits. Um, and we're seeing a lot of good target guns. Renekton and Elise, great top laners to get rid of. And we're seeing a lot of Thresh bans coming out. Um it's something we've touched on in Europe a lot of the supports actually say, I don't think Thresh is that strong. It's more about the player. You know, if the player can play it, and yet it's definitely a ban, but there's not a lot of supports that can. It's interesting because, yeah, he's not like he's overpowered in his own right or whatever, but in a highly competitive, like, super hardcore team with a lot of mechanical skill, he just does crazy things. There was, I think it was a Dignitas game, actually. This was their last one against... Uh, Good Game University, was it? I think their, their victory. Like, Cutie Pie got away with 12 health like 14 times from Lanterns. It was like, you just like would not go down with 200 health left over and over and over again. And it was just like so heartbreaking to see, uh, you know, I guess on GGU's side. We're going through, of course, the last few bands. Complexity, they are really targeting Dyrus right here. 
if they leave him, wow, they're getting rid of Draven. So they've at least done some research on Wild Turtle and Noah's champion pool. They've removed Draven from him. Yeah, so let's see what the first pick will be. It's Dyrus has that choice. Of course, it could be Amy Lane. Top lane has been one of the first picks a lot lately in uh, pretty much all of all of the teams, I think. Okay, I mean, thinking back to the Korean teams, they mm. always used to go for the Singed when he's available. Yeah. Dyrus has talked about Singed a bit, saying how it's his main champion. And, you know, I hope nobody's been watching because I really want to play it. But we do see the card master coming out. 87.5% win ratio already. Yep. Pulling that stat out in stadium in the old noggin. Yep. He's 7-1 so far in the North American LCS. And again, at MLG, Reginald said, if I can get Twisted Fate, I will pick him, I will play him. And they first picked that. And it's always interesting to see when people do first pick solo laners because um, it always puts you in a situation where the world is open for counter picks. The only mid laner, like the or only common mid laner, even removed from this lineup here is Kale. So the world is open for complexity to pick anything they want to shut down Twisted Fate. And, and Reginald says, yeah, that's fine. I'll play him. And the sad mummy might come out. Louder Mornis hovering over that one, locking it in. So yep. we will see him on the Amumu and Lulu being picked up as well by Complexity. So this is interesting because Complexity is opening very safely here. Now, they have given away a little bit from the jungle. They know that strong counter jungling will be very effective against Amumu. He doesn't duel very well. So if he like sees a Sinjao release in, he's got to be, okay, your jungle, I'll back off. I'll let you take that one. Uh, but it does set up for really strong team fighting. We saw Marin go for similar strategy, team fight centric sort of lineup. That is what uh, Mumu means here. With TSM looking for Caitlyn here, that's actually very, very smart. And the Shen, these are both great choices because you can split push to break apart a team fight comp. And you've got a long range Caitlyn who will never get caught by Curse the Sad Mummy. And so Wild Turtle will get free damage out all game. Simply reacting to the picks and straight away here, TSM. Showing their experience, so we do see Dyrus on that Shen. Of course, it could be the odd one. It could potentially be sure. the odd one, but I'm expecting it probably will be Dyrus. We'll see what complexity pick out here. They've got their AD carry selected on TSM. They know what they're up against. The question is, will they be up against it? And we've seen a lot in the North American scene of split pushing Cogmore potentially going to come out. Zed is going to get locked in for Nick Wu. So they are going to like the Zed pick coming through here. Thing is, he will be able to get onto Caitlyn. But it's a Caitlyn with a Shen on the team. That shield will really, really help her in not getting bursted out by Nick Wu's combos. Uh, so, you know, I still think that Wild Turtle will be safe here. Uh, but they have shown that TSM is not a very assassin-heavy lineup. Twisted Fate doesn't participate all that much on the back line in team fights unless he goes Zonius and just dives at hardcore with his ultimate. Shen, again, the same way, does not put out a lot of damage on the back line. Uh, and so they can actually reliably play something like Kog'Maw and say, yes, you know, I'll be sir, I'll be alive here. You guys won't kill me first. I'll just I'll bombard your front line. So the old one looking like he's going to be a man and take Shin Zhao. Sonar also being hovered over by X Special. When he locked that one in to choose alongside Kaylin, wouldn't surprise me. It's definitely a strong poke lane. And we have seen the odd one on Shin Zhao a heck of a lot. It's just really, really strong. And again, he's going to have a really good time heads up against Lauda Mortis as a Mumu. Xin Zhao will win a one-on-one -on -one duel in almost all scenarios. He'll tend to outgank him as well. I mean, has better clear speed and slightly better team fight presence, so we'll see if it gets to that stage of the game. But there's, of course, a lot of early game pressure available here for TSM. I would expect Complexity to lane swap this. I don't think Lulu Cog is going to do well against Kate Sona. Uh, and so we'll see what kind of games arise from that. But we're looking for their last, presumably mid lane pick here. They know he's going to be heads up against TF, unless they go for a two-on-one swap. So what, what would you go with? What would you pick? I mean, they're looking to be very team fight based. Uh, it's it's difficult because they can't stop Shen's ultimate at all with Zed. Uh, honestly, something like Orianna would work here because they could just play protect the Cog and fight four v fives with just Kogma and kiting and Lulu Kogma and Mumu. Um, so Ori works there. If they go Diana, that says okay. Look, you and Zed will just go and try to kill Kate. Cog, you're kind of on your own, and Amumu is going to be all the appeal you get. We'll see if it works. Yeah, we saw in Europe they had a Cassid in alongside a uh, Zed before. It was Fnatic that ran that one. Very much a gank strategy. What I want to know is, why would they go for the Cogmore over the Misfortune when they've got the Amumu in there? It's just a different sort of play style here. Like, they could go for an area of effect team fight kill, but because they grabbed Zed, they're looking more for single target. 
Uh, Kog'Maw is more self-sufficient when, like, Shen gets up in his face than Misfortune, who has basic attacks that aren't nearly as powerful. Uh, so they're not trying to burn down TSM's lineup all at once. They're trying to send Nick Wu and Chupa darts Caitlyn, and they're letting Brunch Yu kill Shen or Sin Zhao, and then kind of work at it from both ends. So what do we see? Okay. As it is laning out, Wild Turtle for his first game of TSM, mm -hmm. first official game, is going to be on Caitlyn alongside him X Special. I think we're probably going to see standard lane setups here with the bearing in mind TSM uh, do have that Twisted Fate. He's going to stick around that mid lane for a while at the start. It's, it's interesting because it, it's hard to say. I don't think Twisted Fate's early game, it feels a lot like Karthus basically, where it's mm. unsafe, a little bit hard to last hit under turret, uh, actually more so for TF than for Karthus. Um, he's able to get bullied around a little bit. So Complexity could send to mid and just shove TF around and really make his life difficult. And then Diana can just... Again, they're on red team. They can give Diana that, that blue buff at the bottom lane and just let him just survive and, and try to last hit with, with Crescent Strikes. Like, that's that's probably an okay setup overall. And again, I think they want to give Kog'Maw an easy lane. I think he will have a terrible time trying to fight against Kate Sona. And if they are in that situation, it's bad for complexity. So overall, who do we think has the advantage after those picks? Obviously, we know Kog'Maw's a late game champion. Yeah. He's going to try and get to that point. Are they going to be able to get there with TSM's lineup? Uh, I really like TSM's lineup. They have two global teleports with Shen and Twisted Fate. They've got a great ganker in Sin Zhao, and they can gank for any lane there, right? They've got a lot of crowd to add to any lane. They can gank for Caitlyn Sona. They can just all pile into Shen's lane. They can pile into Reginald's lane. Like, no matter what they go for, they're going to find kills most likely. So early pressure from TSM is going to be so high, it might not reach late game. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. If you have just joined us, this is game two of the day here in the North American LCES. Your ears do not deceive you. I am here over from the European continent, and we've sent Jat to France. It's Team Solo Mid as the blue team, Complexity as the red team, and straight away we're seeing a potential invade coming out from Team Solo Mid. This is going to be pretty strong for them. They've got a much stronger early game lineup. They've got a, sh a Shen Taunt. They've got a Gold Card. And MIA is walking right face oh, first into TSM. He is not going to get away from that one. The Ignite goes down. Didn't even bother trying to burn anything. He knew the Goose was cupped and he was a dead man, no doubt. And that was actually given across the regional there. Anyone could have finished off. They purposely let him have it. That's really, really strong. Twisted Fate's going to scale so well with early game items. Just getting a Sheen out there, a couple of Doran's Rings out there earlier and faster is so strong. And the funny thing about that gank too was just TSM was just more ready than Complexity was. They both ran there straight, at, straight as soon as possible, but TSM started first. They started first and a little bit late buying possibly from MIA does create that issue for him. So... We do see the lanes starting to set themselves up. As it stands, it's potentially going to be Brunchu in that top lane against Dyer. So it will be a 2v1 in the top, 2v1 in the bottom. We do see Nick Wu heading down that way. So it's looking like it's going to be standard switch lanes for North America. This is going to be a pretty default setup here. They do want to give Kogma that nice lane. Of course, the early double golem is really useful for them as well. It's really the reason... Uh, you tend to see lane swaps actually is more just to make sure that, that your AD character gets to be on equal footing. Wild Turtle and everyone had an easy job in the bottom lane here. And they have sent Shuford towards the bottom, so they're sending actually Nick Wu to heads up against Twisted Fate, which will actually be a pretty decent matchup. He should have good damage there. And I wonder whether Reginald's actually set up for this one, whether he was expecting armor, he does. it. He was very well ready, and it's great. It's amazing how much these players read into the situations to see these things. You know, the fact that he was fully expecting to be against Nick Wu. Yeah, he's got, I mean, he basically just did the, I know someone's going to try to screw with me. He did flat armor and flat MR for uh, marks and glyphs. So he's just like, yes, I need to survive the early game. All I need to do is get to the late game and start getting the ganks going, so he itemized early. They pinged on towards Loud Amoris there. We do see X-Special moving up towards it to see if he can try and harass. As it stands, he's going to be going in 2v1. Doesn't get in there in time, but did he force the Ignite? Was he going to go for the, the smite there, or would he have tried to save it? Uh, I don't know. I feel like Loud Amoris actually wants a blue buff to jungle. Mm -hmm. It's just something that Amumu really wants to get his first clears out. Uh, Chibro was just trying to go to share experience to try to hit level 2. Problem is, though, they've got no pressure, and so Reginald can go for this back line dive, and he's got to be careful, because here he comes. And there is the pressure. He's going to come around. He's going to get that stun card down on Chupa, but will it be enough? You can see he's just going to really pressure him away from this one, but immediately he's going to realize there's problems. Chupa's turned around for this one. Louder Mortis is coming in, and he's just running straight down river. Wants to get the hell away from it. Of course, he has been spotted. There is a ward right down there. Complexity, actually. Nick Wu getting found out by the odd one. He's going for a lot of pressure here. Pops on the three talent strike. Of course, there's no follow up there for the odd one. He does not have a Reginald anywhere nearby. Nick Wu attempting for that, that dive. 
Again, just could not quite find it. But Loud Mortis is now playing what's pretty much uh, normal here on two-on-ones like this, is you basically camp your lane with the jungler, because the shared experience means you don't actually lose much XP overall. And being a two-on-three instead of a one-on-three, you're actually not zoned out very much either, and you keep that turret alive just a little bit longer. We actually want to see how well that top lane is doing. You're now seeing Complexity start their own dive as well. The problem is they've started so much later, TSM will get a free turret, and it will be almost definitely unanswered. So as it stands, Complexity keeping pressure on this top lane, while that bottom lane is almost certainly going to go down. 5,000 gold between them, and Lana Mortis is just having to hang around there. Reginald again coming back in with the next wave. Going to have that slow card, throws it on towards Lana Mortis, and actually a lot of pressure comes down on him. You see the pilt over Peacemaker coming across, and he's forced to back away. That is going to be the first turret of the game, two solo mid picking it up and that's going to stretch their gold lead. Meanwhile, Dyrus in this top lane is doing a really good job at defending it out. He's managed to keep just half a hit point difference there because Lara Mortis has been down that bottom lane the whole time. Odd one, meanwhile, has been pretty much solo in this mid lane. Catches onto doors, Nick Wu gets the three talent strike down, bounces him in the air. That red buff doing wonders for him and he's getting a lot of farm as well in this mid lane 22 you can see cs compared to 12 of course reginald has been missing out he's only got nine cs right now but if you look at you but he's <laughs> only got four yeah it was definitely a conscious choice by tsm there something we're actually seeing uh i think a lot different here in north america really is that they're basically ganking turrets right <laughs> they realized they were not going to kill cheaper they're not going to kill louder mortis but they said you know what a three on two though we can pressure the structure down let's go for it there and it it works straight up and tsm are actually still pushing here two on one super's life still difficult and now that reginald has returned to that mid lane nick Wu's trying to get pressure on him but look at nick Wu's 44 cs he's been having a storm in the meanwhile in this top lane bridge is going to get caught out he's surely going to get dropped here he will be the odd one and now mia is going to have to run away from it but that kenjian surprise is going to come out dyrus is forced to back off to his turret now what a powerful gank that was as well. Shen actually managed to pull turret aggro onto Kogma with that taunt. The knockup came so uh, recently afterwards from the Abwen as well. The extra crowd control really meant a heck of a lot there. That was a beautifully orchestrated dive. So you can see Reginald coming back in towards that mid lane. Louder Mortis has been trying to create problems but not able to get very far. This bottom lane in Team Solar mid, they're not switching it up. They're continuing the pressure on this bottom in the turret. And the only thing that's really saving uh, complexity right now is that Nick Wu has just a million farm right there. 55 minions on him. He's going to be the force here. So we'll see if that ends up mattering much. Of course, TSM have just so much pressure on the map. And you can see how well Dyrus and Abwen run away from MIA and Brunch. Nick Wu's looking for something, though. I don't think he can turret dive this properly, though. I don't think he'll get it. Well, he is going to come up there. Dyrus is very low on health, hasn't hit six. He's going to try and back away straight away. He think we're going to panic here. Will he go for it too early? No, it's just going to back off instead. Realizes he saw MIA keep a vision of them and realize they are all backing off. So Nick Wu's going to go back and buy. Let's see what he picks up. Brutalizer straight away uh, along with that ward. Reginald, meanwhile, has been given a bit of time in that mid lane as well as Tuper in the bottom to try and get some farm. Try and play catch up. 26 to 20 between those two. But 55 to 19 between the two top laners, is that going to pay dividends for complexity late game? Uh, we'll see if it ends up happening. I mean, they're certainly basically banking on Kog'Maw, Nick Wu, and Shooper. The one thing about Diana's itemization is she builds like one or two damage items early and then builds kind of half tanky. They're going on a wild turtle though. They're going aggressive. He's had to cleanse out of this one, but the bandage toss comes in from Lada Mortis. They should finish him off here, and it will be Nick Wu that picks up the kill. They're going to turn back on towards X Special. And bandage toss will be back up in a moment. He tries to bait him around. He's keeping Nick Wu away, but now you can see the odd one. He comes in, forces the flash from Nick Wu. He's going to try and go back on towards X Special, but they're keeping the pressure down, and the odd one forces them away. And that was great mechanics by Nick Wu overall. You saw him put the clone down and pull Odd One towards his main body. Waited for two hits of three talent strike, pulled him as far away as possible, and then swapped it and got himself away. That was nice mechanics there by Nick Wu. It was a good Zed play. And of course, great gank overall by Lada Mortis. Completely worth it, of course, for complexity. Well, potential ward placement coming out from MIA, but he's going to put it right in the Odd One's face. You saw it go down. The pings come out. They know that Lada Mortis is nearby, and the Odd One's setting up for this one. Bandage tosses across. They realize he's there, and TSM are going to try and react to this one. This is going to be really, really brutal, though. It's going to be close. Here he comes in. He's going to go straight for it. MIA getting caught out. He's going to get dropped down. Will he be able to get away from it? He's taken so, so low, but the rest of Complexity do come in. Nick Wu also taking a lot of damage. Wild Turtler pursues, and here comes Reginald. Which one will he go for? He uses the vision to try and catch them out. 
You can see the power cord slowing down loud and more. This pilt over Peacemaker catches across him, but they're not going to chase him this one. X Special, one more hit on towards Loud and as heat go down, but they do bully them away. Great coverage from TSM. Yeah, that was a really, really nice pick up there. And the unfortunate thing for complexity on that steal was that while Lattimore just smited it, he got it low, and Nick Wu last hit that, and then he went down to Wild Turtle. So Caitlyn on TSM is actually wearing the golem buff here. Brunchy, of course, came back. It was a nice slow, but that was a very well-executed sort of counter-invade uh, by TSM. It was well played. So 3-1 currently kills TSM advantage. Turrets very much even 1-1. The goal difference is 1,000 to TSM, and they're pressuring this mid lane. But you can see complexity. There's four of them already coming out for this one. Can they get around the side? Nick Wu with that fortitude potion. Oh, he tried to go aggressive on towards Wild Turtle. Does manage to pop him down. Deathmark has gone down on him. He Ooh, will get man. popped. Absolute explosion there. And he gets the double kill as X Special goes down. Barely any assist credit as well. The bottom lane, the flashing for Trooper, but it's only a red card. Oh, and he's going to come in. Is the three thousand strike? Will it be enough? The shield goes down from Jupiter. He's got no turret to run to, so the odd one's going to pursue this one. But he's got to be careful. The rest of the team are all collapsing on him. He may get the kill, but it could oh, be the, to the death of him. Reginald taken very low. Here comes complexity around the side. Loudermon is running towards him. Reginald's teleporting back. He realizes he might get away from this one. Loudermon is going to continue to chase on the odd one. The, the Reginald, no, he's not going to get caught out because that's the ultimate, and it's going to be the kill for Brunch Yu. Now Loudermon is on towards the odd one. Yeah, Can he ultimate. chase him down? He's going to get to the turret. He can't finish him off, but it's a good trade there. And now it's 4 4 in kills. That was incredible patience on both sides there because both Lauda Mortis and the odd one had their ultimates ready. If Lout said, you know what, I'll ult you to lock you down and my team will show up, I would could have just knocked him right back with the Crescent Strike and been completely fine there. And the irony is, we said at the start of the show, they've stopped banning Zed away from Nick Wu because yep. they don't fear it anymore. But here he is, 3-1, and one, getting the double kill. But now the odd one comes in. He goes aggressive, ace in the hole, Loud Amortis goes down. Dragon was saved as well. And now you can see TSM, they're going to come in, get the reset, and go for it. That was a really, really nice play. And Dyrus specifically landed his Shadow Dash to prevent Loud Immortals from being able to pop his ultimate at all as well. And that really opened up that fight. That was nicely played. Nicely played. Nick Wu was off. He was up the top there. I think he was picking red buff up. I didn't quite see where he was going. But Wild Turtle returns back to this bottom lane. Keeping up the farm. But that's not great because it's against the Cogmore. Yeah, that is going to always be the scary thing to think about. We talked about it last game with Marn versus Dignitas. Where you're fighting a late game AD carry. More, more so late game than Caitlyn is. You always got to be aware of that. There's a ticking clock going at all times, kind of in the back of your head, that, hey, guys, he's going to get scarier and scarier as the game goes on. It is a thing to be concerned about. And, you know, to Complexity's credit, they were holding on a lot better early game than I thought they might have, you know, when you look at TSM's lineup. Well, it is 1-1 in turrets. The gold is still swinging with TSM. He did go even a moment ago, but the fact they picked up that dragon, they picked up another kill, does take them out 2,000 gold advantage, but that's not that big right now. We do see Reginald back in that mid lane, trying to keep them up bay. Brunchy putting the pressure down on towards him. That turret at half health. Also, there's a lot of free farming going on by Chupa at the top there at the moment. He went up. He's managing to keep him going. So he's actually ahead of Reginald currently in the farm. Reginald, of course, with those two kills. But Nick Wu is the big difference right now. He's a nearly double the CS of Dyrus. But Dyrus is effectively playing a completely different game to Nick Wu. Nick Wu has to get those kills, he has to get snowballing, whereas Dyrus is just going to split push his way to victory for TSM. It's going to be very interesting to watch because basically if TSM gets a pretty decent sized early mid game lead, because Dyrus already has a Sunfire Cape, he will be a split push monster. It'll be very hard to deal with him, he will constantly pressure down minions and he'll put a lot of pressure on the map that Complexity must go and deal with, which really hurts their ability to find like cheeky kills in the middle of the game and ways to come back into it. And it, it tends to stretch a gold when you've got a good split pusher like that that can't really be answered. Nick Wu, though, he's had such a good game, he's pretty much set up to one-shot Wild Turtle kind of whatever he wants. And uh, and he can actually pull Dyrus down across the map just because he will be required, this unit will be required to save Wild Turtle in teamfights. So as it stands, 5-4, complexity taking it to them and this is definitely a different game that we saw at MLG Dallas I mean this this match was not even close in fact I don't even think they got four kills at Dallas it was a pretty rough one overall and it certainly snowballed ahead uh, rather quickly but in this case we're seeing it's funny because the early game looked the same right as a bunch of unanswered kills first turret no problem and then you basically saw Nick Wu kind of open up everything and this is honestly really vindicating for him 
Oh my gosh, it just, a blue buff just went right away to uh, MIA. He smited it right before. I don't know if that was on purpose or not. You, you can't imagine that was on purpose. You, unless he's going for a full on AP Lulu, which he is not because he's only got C six CS. That was a definite mistake from Complexity. Reginald, of course, picking up his own blue buff. The pressure continuing in this mid lane. They are going to try and drive it forward. Dyrus has gone back towards the top to try and deal with Chupa to try and stop his free farming, essentially. That's As it is, Nick Wu's continuing on the bottom. It's interesting from Complexity, actually. Chupa is probably the best single choice here to heads up against a split push set. He can stop the teleport with vacuum. Um, and, but here comes the initiation in the mid lane. Reginald diving in. He does get a Shen ultimate coming in as well. So everybody diving in towards the middle. But oh, Brunt Chu gets shielded up there. And of course, MIA with that blue buff. Got a lot of cooldowns. Yeah, he's able to put a lot down. MIA actually had burned his flash as well as Brunch used cleanse. And that was actually really cool, though, from Complexity overall. TSM burned two globals to get, if it weren't for cleanse, what would have been a free kill on Brunch U. So a good escape there by the AD carry. He played that one safely enough. And of course, you just see uh, the Zed and Diana continually split push and farm up. You're seeing their minion kills really go up. Yeah, the pings coming out from Complexity there. You can tell they were like, well, the AD carries down here. Put the pressure on the mid lane. Chupa immediately comes down. He gets in towards position. And they have done a lot of damage on that mid turret. The ward has gone down. We do see an invade from Louder Mortis. He's going to come around. Lane. They're diving on towards the bottom lane. The exhaust on Nick Wu does manage to take down it's going to be wild turtle. I nearly switched across. Oh, and he can't turn it back on towards the next It doesn't matter because here comes Chupa. He lands straight on him. <laughs> Bam! Just explodes him in the face. And now they can pressure the bottom turret as well as the mid lane. And just to show off, he pressed uh, W and E out of order and still picked it up. Nick Wu, by the way, 1v2 under an enemy turret killed Caitlyn. Still got that kill, and that's the difference. I mean, you can see he used the build to cut this in that fight. He's got the Brutalizer early on. He's got that Merc Treads, and he's becoming a monster. And once that death mark's on you, you know you are very much in trouble. Now, I remember seeing Doublelift talking about this, how how they should go for the QSS. You don't want to go for it too early, but yep. that's something they've got to look towards. Yes, the Cooks of Sash will help so much against that death mark. You really, 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 really need to pick that one up. Um, We'll see when he ends up grabbing it. Caitlyn here has actually picked up. This is interesting. He actually has picked up Infinity Edge here. We talked last game about Cutie Pie going Bloodthirster to try to survive fights like that. I feel like Bloodthirster Quick Server Sash, though it's very, very low damage, would be one of the best ways to keep himself alive against Nick Wu. Yeah, he's going to try and burst him down. 6-6 six, six in kills. Gold still only a 2,000 difference. And it is 1-1 one, one in turret. But of course, that bottom turret now down to half health. The complexity are pressuring the turrets more than Team Solo mid right now. That middle turret was almost down. Dragon spawning in, well, it's 26 seconds. They seem a l very early in position here. When they're going to try and ward it out, they are. And TSM, they want to fight for this next Dragon. The question is, who is the stronger of the two? You've got to feel with Nick Wu, if he can get in the right place at the right time, he can take down either Reginald or Wild Turtle, no problem. Well, they've got about 45 seconds on Dyrus's teleport, and Wild Turtle has no summoners, and Special has no exhaust. So the cooldown state, I feel, is better for complexity overall, and these teams feel pretty evenly matched otherwise. The only thing that's going to be a real difference here is how much damage will Dragon do in the fight? Well, complexity are getting in position for this one, and they are going to be the ones that start out the Dragon. No, they're not. They're just going to go in there and have a poke at it. You saw Nick Woot thought about diving on towards Reginald there. They have got vision of the pit, but not the actual inner area of itself. And that does mean Reginald's going to keep throwing those wild cards out. MIA actually took a full brunt from the Dragon there, which means they're going to have to back off from this one. Complexity already taken a lot of damage. They've got no sustain, so they're having to chug through those health pots and keep them at bay. The, the, old, the really great thing here for Complexity, actually, is that Reginald doesn't have a blue buff right now. So he's running out of mana, locking these locking these pick a cards, throwing out wild cards. He's only got three spell casts left, basically. That's a rough spot for him. Wild Turtle, though, great split. Actually, gets a free turret. Even if Complexity gets Dragon, this was actually a better fight for TSM. Yeah, you've got to always give the advantage to taking that turret down, and Complexity completely out of position. The experience of Team Solo mid forcing them to take that turret down. He's continuing to push here. If he shows himself on that inner, you feel they're going to try and go for a fight. He is on that inner turret now, and Complexity realize they've got to react to this. Well, they do have Lattimore's in front. He finds the oven. They're going to go in. Oh, is the bandage toss on towards the odd one, but he hasn't used that ultimate just at the moment. There's the crescendo. There's going to be the curse of the sad mommy, and they all stacked up. Wild growth. Pop! 
pops them all in the air. Team Solo mid getting dropped. Reginald's going to be the target. Chupa gets on towards him. X Special goes down now as well. We did see Brunju getting targeted. He does finally go down. It was Dyrus that picked up the kill, but now Dyrus has got four members on the back side of him. The Wild Turtle, he's trying to get away. He's backing off, but it doesn't matter. Complexity are going to go for the Dragon finally. And advantage goes to Complexity in kills. They got a two for one out of that one. Great initiation. So much damage coming up from Nick Wu, enforcing flash after flash from TSM trying to get away. You did see just how tanky Dyrus was, though. A full team, well, a full team, four fifths of the team of Complexity trying to chase him down, and he was able to escape that. So, Dyrus, he is certainly terrifying here. He's going to be hard to deal with. And, uh, but yeah, you saw a really good Complexity team fight that was good from them. Well, Complexity have to back away from this one. They can't afford to pressure this. It did have the odd one coming in, despite the fact there's three members down there, all low on health. Chupa is going to pick up the blue buff. Dyrus, meanwhile, back at the top, back in that split farming style. The advantage currently with TSM in terms of gold and towers. You kind of feel that that's going to give them the pressure. Oh, Reginald going aggressive there straight away, but you see Nick Wu pulling the damage back on towards him. Reginald's ultimate was used. It does mean that they're going to be down for a while. Dyrus is going to continue pressuring that top lane, but the mid turret's going to go down here. We're going to see Brunchu taking that mid turret, but it's TSM. They are pushing on towards his bottom. There it is. 2-2 two, two in turrets. Can TSM pressure this top turret, bottom turret, though? They're buying time for Dyrus in the top. He does not have his ultimate at all, though. If, if Complexity goes for a fight here, they have a completely free 5-on-4. They're just not starting that fight in time. TSM have picked up two free turrets, and Complexity is too afraid to start fighting them. That's just simply great tactical play there from Team Solo mid, and they do manage to get yet more advantages here. Complexity, meanwhile, are going to clear anything out. Can't see what... Let's have a recap here. Nick Wu, 5-2-2 two, two in terms of kills. 2-0-3, though, for Dyrus. He picked up another kill in that big mad dash fight they had a moment ago. It is, of course, Reginald at 2-2-1. Two, two, Hasn't been able to create too many plays just yet, but they could argue that that ultimately used down that bottom lane did create the option opportunity to take down that inner turret. As it stands though, Chupa, he has got a big farm advantage. He's got the 2-1-2 two, two effectively kill advantage over Reginald as well. So has more gold, hasn't completed a major item yet, nor is Reginald though. And the weird thing that I want to kind of point out here about Chupa is he's playing much more of a utility role as well as they take down this bottom turret. <laughs> And you just see how much damage he's actually taking. Can they taken. take it? I don't think they can. Wild Till's going to turn aggressive, and now he's going to pop back towards him. Chupa's going to take another tower hit, though, and Wild Till does turn it around. Dyrus now chasing on towards Louder Mornings. Can he catch on? One long-range Shadow Dash might be enough. There's the Ace in the hole about to come out. It lands. Dyrus is in range. He gets the full Shadow Dash taunt, and Louder Mornings is going to go down here. We see Dyrus. The odd one comes in with him. Oh. Curse of the Sad Mommy was popped, but Dyrus picks up the kill. That was a nice clear right there. Lulu did have her ultimate available, but didn't quite think he'd need it. But great fight there by TSM, picking up two kills just completely for free. Oh, missteps a little bit. That is a cheaper blooper, though, man. He died just 1v1 against Caitlyn. A cheaper blooper indeed, as it stands, though. 9 8 in kills. There is a 4,000 gold advantage currently building for Team Solar Mid. They have that 4 2 turrets. And I hope everyone watching in Lille is having a good time. It is going to be Nick Wu picking up the red buff and the blue buff going across to Reginald as Wild Turtle clears out this top lane. Let's have a look at the farm between the two AD carriage. You can see 179 CS to 165. It is a gold advantage currently, a big gold advantage, I might add. That's a 1,500 gold advantage for Wild Turtle. He is definitely a very massive Caitlyn here. He's been able to participate in more fights. He seems to have more globals, but in the mid lane, here comes Reginald. Here comes Reginald, and there's going to be getting on towards Louder Mortis, forces him away, but Brunchu comes straight back in and lays down a hell of a lot of damage himself. Yeah, he is a very scary man. There we go, Cheaper finally on the bottom lane. He's been split pushing forever. He's finally finished the Nasher's Tooth, but I was trying to point out before is that he is not he had not itemized a lot of early damage output. That 1v2 lane shut him down quite a lot. Early on, he grabbed early Mercury Treads and a Home Guard Boots just to try to survive a lot more early on. Finally has his first damage item. Now we'll see if he can do anything in fights. So, everybody back in lanes. Everybody backing off. Special trying to keep the wave away while Turtle farming to get out. How are we judging Wild Turtle so far? 22 minutes into this game, he just had a great, effectively 2v1 with Jupiter down the bottom. Mm -hmm. He's playing mechanically very, very well. Uh, the fights have been kind of back and forth overall. I can't really say there's anything uh, that he's done wrong. He's getting dived, and there's not much he can do about it, really. Uh, I think he's playing a great game. Playing a fantastic game, as are Complexity, keeping themselves in it against Team Solo mid. The team that 
honestly, probably at the start of the season, everybody would have put it number one. Yeah, they were pretty much the favorite North American team from last season. Of course, they won the season two regional. So, uh, you know, their last documented performance was, yeah, they were the best performing team in North America. So um, they're in third right now. They have potential of taking top two at the end of the weekend. We'll see if they can do it. We'll see if they can. With Dignitas already picking up a win in first game of the day, it does seem a little unlikely, but, but you never know. It's Dignitas versus CLG coming up next, but it is going to be loud and modest. They dive on towards Clever use of the bandage toss there, gets across to the Wraiths. Doesn't manage to pick up the Wraith though, because TSM actually putting a great bit of damage down here. Brunch, you taking a heck of a lot straight away from Wild Turtle and Reginald, and that's potentially causing problems here. They might pressure on towards his mid lane, but they need to be wary of Nick Wu, but he is instead just going to back off. TSM going to go run straight down towards... No, they're not going for Dragon, because he's not up for 43 seconds. Is that timing off? Uh, I mean, they just kind of knew they couldn't keep pushing forward right then. They're pulling... I guess they don't need to pull Darius down at all, actually. He's, his ultimate is up. The weird thing about Brunch Yu here, though, is he's not backed. He has zero sustain whatsoever. No Vampiric Scepter, no Lifesteal Quince. Doran's Blade will take too long to get his health back up, so he's going to be at half health no matter what in this fight. There will be finally recalls back, but it might be a little bit too late. Dragon's coming up very soon. Dragon is coming up soon. Nick Wu's going to go in towards Dyrus. Let's see who can win out this duel. Dyrus doesn't really want it. He has got that Warmogs and Sunfire Cape, though, but Blade of the Rune King for Nick Wu now will definitely put some damage on towards Dyrus. But it would be a long, hard-fought fight as it stands. So look at this. They're ready and waiting to see if they can go towards the blue buff. Dragon is up. TSM taking the Dragon while they go for blue. Yeah, they're going to kill it way too fast. It goes down completely for free. Complexity could start a fight here. They No, actually, they don't have Nick Wu. They could not. It would be irresponsible. It would be a four on five. They are still pulling Nick Wu down, though, which means this is strange to me because I don't think they can force anything here unless they surround Caitlyn. Well, we do see Caitlyn going in towards Nick Wu's, heading straight in towards Wild Turtle. He He's going to go for it, puts the death mark down and gets cleansed off straight away. And now Nick Wu in trouble. Reginald comes in. Doesn't matter because Dyrus was there. And now that means TSM can turn and burn. And Complexity in all manner of trouble. It is going to be Loudermont. is going down to Reginald. He is no way he's going to be able to get away from this one. Slowly but surely he will get dropped here. The stun card may come out. MIA is going to come back around here. Have they got enough to try and detract him? It is going to be the Glitter Lance and that should save him. But it doesn't matter. It's going to be the mid turret that's going down. Dyrus eats a couple of tower hits, but he doesn't care. He's tanky enough. Wild Turtle takes down the next turret, and they're going to push on towards the inhibitor. It's a lot of damage available right here. You saw that Shen ult earlier completely keep Wild Turtle alive. Nick Wu's back up in about seven seconds here. And Complexity took a pretty good job of holding the race alive. Wild Turtle could be in a bad spot. There's the vacuum. They do manage to try and pull Wild Turtle back. They didn't manage to get the Glitter Lance down, though. Reginald tried to prevent Louder Mortis from going back, but they have. Managed to recall, but it doesn't matter because TSM have gained huge advantages from that one. Complexity going to try and gain an advantage of their own and push straight down mid. Yeah, TSM does have 5,000 gold of, uh, of a lead themselves, 26 minutes in. Ooh, their health bars are low enough. Complexity is going for a stab. They're like completely trying to control the Baron area uh, with a Kog'Maw. I mean, they really could. TSM are blind to this. They already had Oracles recently. TSM does not know. Auto has to walk face first into the team. He tried to go for it, but the death push down. The old one has got the Oracle, forces the flash away. Now they're going to go towards a special bandage toss. Misses out from Lana Morris. Yeah, that, but that was the right play. They got a really, really good bait there. And again, they still know they have ward control. If they get back into the fog of war, they force TSM to blind check this again or give it up. Reginald's ultimate's going to be up in around about 10 seconds' time. He's coming back in. The whole of TSM are off to the side. You see the Baron, it's down to half health already. They're waiting. You see Complexity are very low already. Here comes Dyrus, acing the hold on towards Brent Shu. He's going to go down, but the Baron's already dropped. Can they turn it around this one? Loudermorris has still got his ultimate available. Remember, Curse of the Sad Mommy. But they are all pinned in the Baron pin. Chupa does manage to get the move for. Curse of the Sad Mommy goes down. Where is Nick Wu going? It's Reginald they're going to target. Chupa gets him down, but Nick Wu is dropped. He managed to get Wild Turtle down. It is TSM dropping like flies right now. It's a double kill for Nick Wu. It's a triple kill for Nick Nick Wu, and that is an ace for Complexity. Wow, a five for two plus Baron. Even uh, Brunch, you managed to solo Dyrus, heads up 1v1. An excellent, excellent fight by Complexity. You mentioned that 10 second on Reginald's ult. They were waiting those last few seconds. They knew if they ran in too headlong, Complexity would catch them out. And Complexity used that hesitation. So many lower tier teams face check over and over and just die. And higher tier teams, they wait five seconds. Complexity used that against them and said, you're going to play it safely because you don't want to throw this game. You're not going to face check this Baron Nasher. And that's purely down to the team knowing the exact timer 
I mean, they knew when it was used, and they said, it's down. It's still down. We've got to do this. And that's yeah. just great timing by somebody on Complexity. Great calls. Yeah, they, they had enough vision from wards that even if Reginald did pop ult and see them, they knew Tisa was far enough away they couldn't engage on them off the reveal. They said, okay, we have enough room. We can run if we need to. The scariest thing, though, is that fight where you know you can't all flash the wall. You're like, we've got a fight here. We have no mana. We use it to kill Baron. Guys, I really hope this works. And, and you've got to feel maybe they should have peeled away. The moment the Baron had gone, Reginald's ultimate being used. Where's he going to go towards? Probably the bottom stack. I guess now he's gone towards the top to clear out that wave. As it stands, though, look at that. Look at that swing that just came around. It was a 5k gold difference. Now it's just a thousand, and that's going to turn around as well because Complexity are here all with the Baron on. I think two members went down in that fight, but it doesn't matter. Complexity now with potentially the upper hand. And the thing to point out with his gold lead as well is that TSM has Twisted Fate. He gives bonus gold to his teammates whenever they last hit a minion, and you can see there's a good 800 or so minion kills on this TSM lineup. So that 1600 gold lead we see right here is just from TF passive. So as far as every other measurement of gold is concerned, these teams are equal right now. And we see that TF of Reginald. Oh, base in the hole used. Going on towards Brent Shu. Doesn't matter. He'll just manage to get most of that back any second. It's going to tick up. He has, of course, not got the Baron buff on him. So that's one of the members that did go down in that fight. Mm -hmm. Of course, Chupa continuing to pressure that top lane. They're going to swing around and take it down. Well, it's going to be pretty much their prerogative. They know they have control over the map. It's risky for them because oh, they Dyrus. don't... Why He's did you go aggressive, man? He's going to get caught out here. Louder Bodies comes in. Curse the sad mommy. Dyrus is caught out. He's going to go down. It's Brunch you that picks up the kill. He went aggressive at just the wrong moment as Complexity were coming out the bushes. He didn't know the rest of the team is coming through the jungle there. They saw Nikwu at the bottom said, okay, at, you know, they can't be diving that hard. They don't have five members, but they all came in just at the right time. They burned everything to get that kill. And of course, Nick Wu still on that split push. You know, without teleport, just on a split push, it worked for him. It's working out well from his eight and three. And Reginald doesn't want to get too close to Nick Wu because he could aggress. He's got flash. He's got ignite. And we've already seen him go 2v1 under a tower. He could yep. potentially dive in towards Reginald. Reginald keeping well away from that one. Has got the Zonya's hourglass to keep him safe, but complexity. They're working their advantages here very well. It's 5-5 five, five in turrets, and look at Nick Wu. He's on the inhibitor turret. It would be a mistake for uh, Nick Wu to really try to dive, though, because Zoni's Hourglass makes it uh, just so hard to kill someone with the death mark. Of course, we see the split push in the mid lane as well. It's very Dignitas style, where Chooper pushes down that mid turret. Yeah, it's down to half health. I mean, this is, this is them trying to close out the game, but it's so difficult because TF Shen are so good at picking crazy fights. Complexity is oh, scary. Ultimate use from Dyrus on towards Reginald. Reginald got caught out and taken very low. So Dyrus saving his life there. But that means the ultimate's not going to be available. It means that the top lane, they know they're safe. Dyrus comes in. Can he 2v1 against Chupa and Nick Wu? It doesn't matter. The old one is there to save his bacon. And the rest of the team backing off there. Baron Buff, I believe, has just worn off from Complexity. So they're going to run away from this one. Reginald's going to come in. He tries to come around towards Nick Wu. Chupa there keeping the pressure on. He's like, yeah, come this way. You're going to be in trouble. And that's a credit to Nick Wu there. He is never using Living Shadow in order to farm or pressure a champion. He knows to be afraid of Shen and Twisted Fate. He saved it for the TF ult and got out very, very cleanly. That's one of the things you have to do with Zed is just make sure you keep that escape tool as an escape tool. And for the first time in the game, I believe Complexity now have the gold lead. It's only going to be very short-lived because TSM, of course, with Twisted Fate, will continue to keep that lead closed down, but it's going to TSM pushing up the mid lane, and they realize Baron Buff is off. What can they gain from it? They can see down the bottom lane, there's two members of Complexity shoving. TSM are thinking of going up the mid lane. Instead, they realize probably can't hold this one. No, it's going to be very, very difficult for them, though, to realize at least on Complexity's side, their Baron Buff has timed out, so we're just at an equal game at this point. You know, the last four minutes was Complexity really abusing that Baron buff split push because it had so much sustain and we're able to do a lot of crazy things around the map. But now we've kind of reset this. We're in a new situation. And actually to point something out, by the way, this is completely random, but Wild Turtle has actually picked up Executioner's Calling. It's an efficient attack damage and crit item. There's really not a lot of healing on that team, so it's really just there as an efficient damage buy. Meanwhile, Dyrus is stacking out the armor now. Wardens come out, going towards that Vandians. He's going to be a mean, lean, split-pushing machine if he can get going. But he's 4-2-5, and he's had to use that Stand United a few times now to save people's lives when, honestly, they shouldn't have been in that position. 
Nick Wu in this mid lane. He's gonna keep on poking. We do see Chupa again split pushing. So double split push effectively from Complexity. Keeping things active for TSM. Now we're moving into late game here. 33 minutes in. You can see the goal. 50,000 apiece. How are you seeing this? We're at 5-5 five, five turrets. Everything across the board is even as it gets. Well, what we kind of see and what we call it in Champion Select was that Complexity picked more of a late game sort of lineup. It's a, it's a team with Kog'Maw. Like, it's a late game sort of lineup. The caveat to that, though, is that Rage has enough items that he can try to play as an assassin and almost sacrifice himself just to try to take out Brunchyu. And that's going to actually really depend on summoners. Because Dyrus, Reginald, and Alwyn can all get to him and try to burn him down. And it's up to Brunchyu to position himself properly and get away from those situations. Nick Wu, he's going to have a pretty easy time getting to Wild Turtle. Um, and so it's really kind of a battle of like whose AD carries get in a worse situation. Uh, and that's really what it's going to be about. In most cases, I give it to Complexity, but you never know. Reginald is on this bottom lane. I tell you what, they're miles away from this one. It is, of course, Reginald and Dyrus. They can get in. I think we just saw potentially Reginald did use his ultimate. He knows they're there, so he knows they're going to lose Baron for this one. They're going to try and harass it, but they're going to try and push the base instead. Complexity are going to lose an inhibitor turret here. And actually, will it be the rest? Well, they're using Abba and Special to actually oh, try to caught. stop the Baron attempt. Abba is going to go down for free. They'll get the Baron, but Zed has already recalled back. It's up to him to defend the base. He's going straight for Wild Turtle as well. He does mean he's lost the inhibitor turret. Wild Turtle's two inhibitor turrets gone down. He's on towards the inhibitor. The rest of Complexity have got to back off. They've got to get back, but they're going to lose so much of the base. Just getting that Baron. Nick Wu goes in. He goes aggressive on towards Wild Turtle. Is it going to be enough? No, it isn't. He gets taken down, gets pressured, but now they're on towards game. Wild Turtle goes down. Curse to the side, Mummy was popped. Here comes Brunch Yu around the side. Dyrus goes down. So that's two members of TSM gone down, but it's got two inhibitors. It's a great exchange for TSM. They bought Home Guard on everyone they could that could afford it. Only Brunch Yu didn't pick that up, and they just dove in on that one. Uh, everyone just burning Flash, burning Summoners, burning every cooldown they could, and they just blitzed down Wild Turtle because they knew Sono could not get there in time, uh, and they knew that Odwin was already dead, so they had uh, an obvious 5 on 4 and just blitzed through it. Loudermont is going to tank this one up. It's going to be this inhibitor. The turret's going to go down almost certainly. Remember, the bottom one is already taken very low as well, so they're going to get on the inhibitor. This could be two apiece between these two teams. Nick Wu's doing the clearing damage. He's clearing out the team, but they are going to back away from this one. Bottom turret is low. Are they have enough to tank it up. They've got 10 seconds before Dyrus and Wild Turtle spawn up here. Chupa, I think it's a split between the team. Louder Mortis is not going in for this one. They want to finish it off. You can see he's going to put the shield down. They've stretched him across too much. And here comes Reginald. He gets the stun card, but Chupa pops Zonia's hourglass straight away. Brunchu is there. The rest of the team going to go. Crescendo on towards Chupa. Nick Wu running in. They turn on towards Reginald. He's used the Zonia's hourglass just at the right time. Louder Mortis around there at the moment. Hasn't got curse to the sad moment available. Reginald's solo. Here comes Nick Wu. He's going to join the fight just as Brunchy comes in there, but Wild Turtle turned it around. He's picked up a triple kill for his team. Goes for the ace and a hole on Brunchy. Doesn't land it, but what a great turnaround from Team Solo mid. That was a beautiful fight right there. Reginald, again, initiating it up, and with no ults really available, you just saw how hard it was for Complexity, and Brunchy does not have sustain. He, like, desperately needs a Vampiric Scepter because he can't participate in fights anymore. He takes a little bit of damage and is like, what? I'm out. Sorry, guys. He was incredibly afraid of Dyrus there. Just Ignite pretty much forced him away, and the push is still coming now from TSM. The odd one coming around the side of Nick Wu. There is no Patara. There is no Inhibitor. He's going to get the three-talent strike. He's going to get knocked up. One more shot should do it. No. Brunch you covers him off, but this is TSM pushing in. There is two inhibitors down already. There is a seven seconds on the spawn timer, so complexity should be up in time, but they have TSM knocking on their door. And Reginald, of course, just pushing that top lane, found the easiest thing available, went in for that very successfully there. And you're just seeing this game, it's just crazy going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Brunch you finally starting what should be a Bloodthirster, but he picks up the BF sword before the Vamp Scepter, which I don't know, man. I feel like he needs to stay, I really, really do. We'll see how it goes, though. He is 3-3-5 three, three, and five right now. And this game just is as close as ever. Very, very close stuff here. 17-15. Look at the goal. Just 300 between them. 8-6 and 2. It's two inhibitors down for complexity. One inhibitor down for TSM. Bottom inhibitor turret down very low as well for TSM. So the game is wide open between these teams. Baron is now going to be up in a roundabout. Oh, I don't know when. When did they pick it up last? Where is it? I can see Nick Wu. Looks like he's got about 30 seconds. So it's another two and a half minutes before we have a Baron dance. 41 Dragon 25. is being picked up as well by Complexity. That's going to give them that gold lead once again. 
Ooh, I'll tell you what, this is a tight game. It's going to be incredibly close. This actually feels a lot like Complexity versus Vulcan from MLG as well, where they just had these crazy split push like semi base trades over and over. Brunch U has finally picked up an Empiric <laughs> Scepter. Oh my gosh, he's only 300 gold from completing Bloodthirster as well. And of course, with that wave, he's even closer to now, only 200 gold away. So forget what you knew about late game carries. This Kog'Ma is there already, and he's going to be a scary, scary man. Dog he's going to be thing. a scary man, but he's about 3,000 gold behind Wild Turtle in terms of gold. Look at that. Big, big difference in disparity between the two. Of course, Wild Turtle did just get that triple kill a moment ago. Complexity now beating out those waves. No way near those waves getting in. So. Is this actually giving complexity the pro the benefit? Because super minions are being fed to them. They're getting a lot more extra gold here that TSM's feeding to them. TSM unable to just take advantage of these super minions pushing in. Now, TSM are using the bottom lane. They're using Dyrus' mm. split push. Cheaper is going to be heads up. They're actually going to go for it. I don't know if he can outfight Dyrus with super minions there, but it will prevent Dyrus from being able to teleport well. Oh, and Cheaper's just what? going in hardcore. He might have enough, but you can see the damage being turned around. Dyrus sticking out this one, and now Cheaper realizes that this is not a fight I can win. Two super minions alongside me. Reginald's possibly going to come in for this one. Uses his ultimate and Morley to just keep them at bay. And it is going to be, again, another split push dance. Yeah, going in with super minions there on your back was a pretty scary choice. He did force Dyrus to recall, let his team wave clear, and Dyrus now has to go all the way back through to that bottom lane and continue the split push. So he did buy time for his team, and their inhibits do come back first. So the inhibitors will be back before Dyrus rejoins the fight. And now Complexity has a small window about 30 seconds to a minute long of inhibitor lead. And they have that inhibitor lead. And let's look at the items. Everybody is backing off. Everybody is buying. Let's try quickly take a look. The two top laners. We can see Blade of the Rune King, Randy and Zoman, Black Cleaver, and Last Whisper for Nick Wu. It was 934. Meanwhile, Dyrus obviously going that split push monster route. Randy and Zoman's about to be completed. He's got that phage in there as well, along with the Sunfire Cape and the Warmogs. Let's have a look at the AP carriage. You can see. For Chupa, he's got a Zonia's Hourglass. In fact, both APs with the Zonia's Hourglass, the Rylas, the Nashes, and possibly not sure what he's going to go towards later on there as well. We'll have a look towards Reginald. You can see Zonia's, of course, Lich Bane. Looks like it's going to be the Rabidon's Death Cap. He's going to be a very scary Twisted Fate coming up soon, but it's mm -hmm. the AD carries. They are way ahead in terms of gold at the moment. Infinity Edge, Bloodthirster, Phantom Dancer for both of them, as well as the Last Whisper. The difference being both with the Berserker Greaves, one with the Home Guard, that's going to be Wild Turtle and the execution is played, as you called it. A little bit of a strange one towards this end game, but it's it's helping. He, he bought it to basically oh, he's get got a double boost Phantom of power. Dancer. Yeah, he finally sold it for a Phantom Dancer. He basically bought it for a boost of power because Complexity had just got Baron. They're going to be at his doorstep. He's like, this is like a 2,000 gold item I can buy to like just get a boost of power. To cut. It's basically like the version of a, of a green elixir, basically. He's like, I just need some items now. Complete it. Do some damage there. It worked for a while, and of course, he farmed so well. He just replaced the item, and now he's got, like, 85 or something percent crit chance. Like, he's now scary again. So, timers from Team Solo mid here. As you see, X Special with the Oracle going in to clear out the Baron Pit. It will be up in 10 seconds' time, and Complexity looking like they're ready to fight for this. They are grouping up, but the problem is Dyrus is split pushing the bottom lane, and there are no teleports on Complexity. If TSM baits them properly, Reggie can teleport and back through the base and close the game out. Complexity can't stand for Baron that long. They'll get 2v0 and lose their base. So Cheaper, yeah, Cheaper has to 1v1, and he has to make sure he can Moonfall the Stand United, and that his team can 4v4. Yeah, he does go back, he clears out that wave, remember, he's got nothing, which effectively puts his team potentially in a 4v5 fight now at this Baron. Team Solo mid, a great down to half health already, and to see, finally, that Complexity is going to come across, but he's too late! Louder Morn is in trouble, he's going to have to flash out of this one, the rest of his team are going to come around, MIA taking very low, X Special is going to get dived down, because the sad mommy being popped by Louder Mortis. And the wild growth on him. Wild turtle gets shut down. X special gets shut down. Wheel of Islands is all happening. Chupa is fighting off towards the side. Brunchu is going to get dropped. It's red. the odd one that picks that kill up. Nick Wu taking low. Reginald chasing on towards MIA. TSM can pick this one up. You can see Chupa, he's losing his health. He's losing the fight to Dyrus as well. It's going to be close. It's going to be a chase as well. Can he take down Dyrus? I'm not too sure. Nick Wu's going to get singled out. Nick Wu's getting dived on. Chupa's also getting dropped here. He gets the Shadow Dash. Chupa goes down. Nick Wu now in trouble. Reginald comes in. Can he get the stun card? No, he can't. It's the wild cards thrown out. But it was a three for two. And it's TSM with the advantages. They're going to take two inhibitors from this. And of course, they have the Baron buff on the remaining members as well. This will be their base for now, at least. But Nick Wu, remember, he has home guard. He's going to go back in. He's going to go back in. He does try and get full health, but he still gets knocked straight up. He goes aggressive on towards Reginald. Zonya's hourglass baited in there. Is it going to be enough? He
He does get the kill, but he's going to go down. There's not enough we can do Almost. to save this one. MIA now in trouble, but the inhibitor has been saved for now. But the odd one's on it, and MIA is doing everything he can to keep them away. It will <laughs> only be one inhibitor traded. That's a good bit of defense work from Complexity. Yeah, they went on a one for one. Again, they saved one inhibitor as well. That's not bad. The top lane minions actually had been pushing the whole way through and got a turret pickup for Complexity. So now you just look at that scoreboard. One kill, one turret, one inhibitor, and 200 gold separate these two teams. I mean, we've cast some close games in the LCS. We've cast hour-long games, but dang, this game is ludicrously close. This is incredibly close. Like you mentioned, wow. The question is, Complexity, they lost that fight. And it was a 4v5, mm -hmm. which is a day. Actually, it's a lie. It was a 4v4. I yeah. lie. I lie. I lie. Yeah. It's just simply about positioning. Remember, they had no wards down at Baron. So it was a rough fight to go into. And they'd already lost They'd already lost the Baron. And yeah. I kind of question whether possibly Louder Mortis, when he went in, he went in with the bandage toss, probably should have just flashed straight out and said, disengage. We lost it. But they found a four on four. They knew they could stop Dyrus. And they had positioning, too, because Reggie was a little bit split off. And they actually got Wild Turtle at the start. Mm -hmm. He got completely evaporated in that battle. Um, which was a huge pickup there for Brunchu. The problem was, because Reggie was off to the side, he actually had a flank on Brunchu. Brunchu got soloed out, basically. Despite killing the AD carry, there was still damage output to hit him, and that was Reginald, who's now got a death cap. He's got Zonia, he's got Lich Bane. Brunchu, it's actually really hard for him to live. I feel like he needs to grab a Warmog so he can survive that, that sort of damage output and keep putting out pain, because he's gonna have so much DPS, he'll full heal with the Bloodthirster, and he just needs to tank it through. Such a quick hit and run there on the Dragon from Complexity. They caught TSM off guard, I feel. TSM were getting sort of position for that. And we're like, oh, it's already gone. And Complexity have already ev evacuated the entire jungle area. So they are going to push back on this bottom. It's an exposed inhibitor. And TSM want this fight. The question is, can they take it to them? Complexity have all of their ultimates available. And this is going to be a scary fight for both teams. Yeah, everyone has full ultimates. I'm counting the flashes. And we have actually only two oh, for TSM. Going for it. He's going to be able to find the Auburn. If he goes for the Bandage Toss, he doesn't really want to waste too much crowd control on that. Loudermorris takes a bit of damage, but they've got positioning now. They could go for this one. Dyrus is in front. Dyrus taking very low. Loudermorris still gets used because the sad mommy. There it is. He goes out. Crescendo hits the entire complexity team, though. Can they turn it around? Wild Turtle out the back, just hitting, hitting one after the other. There's a double kill for him. Loudermorris goes in. That's going to feed him a triple kill. MIA strand. That's going to be a quadra kill. Can he get the pentakill? Brunch you one on one. It's going to be the pentakill for a beautiful play. Wild Turtle stepping up. Chaos, do you have something to answer right now? Because your replacement is doing a fantastic job. And that is the game for Team Solo Mid. Their base is definitely in shambles now. You just look at them. Happy to tank these turrets. And yeah, you know, like Special and Dyrus, that's going to be all theirs. We actually heard them yelling across the wall. Like, Zuna, eat your heart out. I was just hearing things through the headphones. TSM, this is their nexus. That is the game. Congratulations, TSM in an incredibly hard-fought match. Wow, what a game. 2,000 gold between the two. Big grin on the face of Wild Turtle. First game for TSM, and he picks up a pentacle at the end. Really well played, but you've got to give the credit to Complexity as well. Fantastic performance by them, <laughs> but I would question Laudamore is chasing it down, looking for that fight when they could have just stayed in the base, used those boots, used the speed initiation, and maybe just fought them directly on top of the inhibitor. I thought it looked okay. Hey, like they came in, they had a decent initiation because the main thing to, to think about was that they had a completely safe brunch you. Kogma was the last one to go down, had free reign to attack the front line the entire time. But as it turns out, I mean, you talked about it all game, the gold lead was always higher for Wild Turtle. He was always an item ahead of Brunch U, and that ended up being the big difference there. That extra Phantom Dancer really gave him a lot of extra damage output, and he killed the front line even faster. Everyone that Complexity tried to assassinate, you had Zonia's getting used by Reginald, you had just the durability available there, Dyrus with a bunch of health items, and he tanked it through. It was just great by them. So we do have a replay of that last fight, of course. The pentakill action from Wild Turtle stepping in for Team Solo mid. Take us through it, Freak. Okay, so once the initiation starts, I want to watch watch the back line basically not die for TSM. So Dyrus and Abwin are in the front. They get a nice taunt. That's not a big deal. Initiation starts on a Dyrus, and then watch as basically they don't have the damage output so much. A beautiful crescendo stops the punishment, and there you can see, like, Okay, they kill the album, but no big deal. They've already killed two members already. They go in for Wild Turtle. Look at the Zonias there by Reginald. He takes so long to go down that 
they are able to kill everything else out first. They are able to take everything else out as basically only, only Brunch Yu really puts out damage. They got Trooper early on. Loud of Mortis, not a huge damage threat. Nick Wu, his damage gets Zonius out or he has to hit tanks and whatnot. So the other damage sources all get taken out and then there's just no one left to threaten. So fantastic performance, fantastic game, but when you compare it to MLG, TSM won that one very quickly and very yep. easily. Mm -hmm. So, while it's great to see a penna kill on Wild Turtle, is it a great TSM performance? I think Complexity looked really, really good there. You saw uh, an amazing early mid game by Nick Wu. Uh, you know, they had some good strategic plays overall TSM, right? They got that turret down early from the Twisted Fate push. They were winning a lot of the early kills. They had good ganks. They played it strategically pretty well. Um, Nick Wu kind of carried the like the middle 20 minutes there. Chooper just kept trying to farm in the side lane, kept trying to catch up, kept trying to catch up. Brunch you the same way, just kept trying to find farm. Nick Wu carried that the whole way through, uh, and that was really how the game was different. When you look at the prior one, Dyrus shut him down, and Nick Wu had a terrible time. In this one, Brunch Yu was 1v0ing mid lane for a long time as, mm. as Reginald was pushing the bottom, and because of that, it was just a different complexity. It was Nick Wu on fire. Nick Wu on fire, and what sort of if any more of an impact could he have made in that game? I mean, he had a tremendous start in that game. We saw him going 2v1 in mm. that bottom lane where he got exhausted and still picked up the kill. There was a number of moments, though, where the fight started and he was a long way away. I mean, he had to do this weird mix of, like, trying to defend a lane, you know, defend a push, come back in. Like, it was a very interestingly interesting game and interestingly played by TSM because they've got a split push team. They've got Shannon Twisted Fate, and they tried everything they could just to split up that complexity lineup and, and break them apart and make them out of position. Uh, I think to complexity's credit, they did a pretty good job of actually holding on despite that. I think they did a good job keeping everyone together, not getting caught out too terribly much. Um, but I think one of the biggest points was that bottom lane uh, fight where Chooper and Loud Mortis gave two kills away to Wild Turtle. They gave him so much more gold than, than uh, Brunch you had that I think he was able to sort of outscale that Kogma, and that was actually a really big impact there. A very big impact indeed, and of course it is time for a quick break, but we will be back with an interview with Mr. Pentacle himself, Wild Turtle, and alongside him will be X-Special from Team Silo Mid. We'll be right back. <laughs> 